Hello again everyone. This is Jan Monahan for Wrapping with Jan. I hope you're having a good week. Uh, we are back from vacation, back from Italy. We had a wonderful time and it's time to get back to work. I am opening the uh, My Monthly Hero kit for October 2019 and I will admit that um, this this particular kit uh, kind of, uh, it, it just wasn't, well, I guess the best way to describe it is I'm kind of a, a log cabin um, rustic Christmas kind of gal, and um, all these fancy colors and things like that just don't work. And yes, we had a, had a uh, record player like that, and I remember my brother, uh, there was a neighbor who had a table like that. He hit his head on the table had to have stitches and my sister and I got really mad because he got a popsicle and we didn't and here is the or here are the dies for this and I, they're pretty much and I think they're all represented there um, oh let's take this is my favorite part let's take a look at the goodies uh, I know that there's lots of paper in here. I saw that. Since we were out of the country, I didn't have a whole lot of opportunity to get on the internet and find out all the stuff that was with this kit. And um, this right here is, are supposed to be snowflakes in this little packet. And right there, that's, that's glitter. We're going to be using that in this video. And I was very intrigued with all the bright colors. Uh, we've got kind of a, a hot pink and an orange. Um, pea green, kind of a forest green. And then we have a teal. And we have a ocean blue, I guess, is the best way to describe it. And then we have this cool mirrored stock. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do with that, but we will use it. I still have the packaging for this kit. I want to see what they're calling all this cardstock. There is the, um, the mirrored cardstock, and then the, all the colors they're calling a neon cardstock. And then, yes, they, it's a, they're clay snowflakes. And then there's uh, glitter. So, all right. There you have it, and it's time to get started. All right, project number one. We are going to make a card out of all of the colors that came in the kit. All right, and I've cut, I've taken my trimmer, my paper trimmer, and I've cut um, inch and a half strips off of each of the pieces of cardstock. And I'm going to um, ink up that stamp and make some Christmas trees and then as soon as I get this um, die out of here there we go we'll be able to get going okay in my misty I'm at one at a time I'm going to stamp uh, these Christmas trees with the hero arts intense black ink and we'll end up with if my math is right six Christmas trees um, as I was inking these up, I thought, well, you know, these kind of look like Whoville Christmas trees. There they are. And that made me feel a little bit better about the colors. Anyway, okay, I've got a 5x5 a five five card base. It's top folding. And that's what we're going to use to make the card. And I've taken, a, I think it's about a quarter inch... Uh, off of the uh, mirrored cardstock there and then um, I've got a piece of it's um it's called platinum vellum and um, it's it's kind of cool it's got a it's got a neat shine to it I know I harp on you every time I work with vellum but be very careful not to fold it because you will leave a scar and that scar will never disappear you'll have to start all over again Okay, um, I am going to put, have yourself a, 
well, maybe it's rocking around the Christmas tree. I think that's what I put in there. And once again, I'm using the Hero Arts Intense ink. And I decided not to use any uh, embossing powder. Um, I, it's the it, vellum and, and heat kind of scare me. So we're just going to uh, wing it here. Always check before you take it out of your Misty to make sure that the ink is dry. Um, when it comes to vellum, vellum is not very forgiving in a whole lot of areas. And if you um, smudge some ink, uh, that's it. You can't erase it, you can't wash it off, you can't take it back. The only thing, the only thing you can do is put it in the wastebasket and start all over again. All right, let's put this card together. There was really no rhyme or reason to the way or the order in which I put the colors in here. I guess it was just the way I felt at the time. And we're going to put three on the top and three on the bottom. And I'm using score tape on the back of each one of these. Three on. I will show you a little trick to do with vellum. I, I know, I, I've been giving vellum a bad rap this time, but it is difficult to work with. And uh, especially when it comes to adhesive, you need to find creative ways to hide it, to, to hide the adhesive behind the, um, behind the vellum. And this is the way I'm going to do it for this card. I am taking a quarter inch wide uh, score tape and I'm going to put it right below these Christmas trees here. I probably could have used a half inch wide score tape but I was afraid that if I used that then the um, the mirror tape was going to have to be wider and I was afraid that that would become the vocal vocal point, my goodness, focal point of the card. And um, so if we can get this pulled off, and the first thing I'm going to do is center this vellum right in the middle of that tape so that there's a quarter inch on the vellum and a quarter inch above the vellum. And this is how I'm going to hide it. Now if I can find my, yeah, there's my mirror tape. I'm going to put that and then this will, the mirror cardstock will hide the, um, the adhesive. And I suppose I could have put more um, underneath the rock and around the Christmas tree, but I didn't think that was necessary. Um, so now let's get the rest of these trees on. All these trees have places that uh, embellishments, ornaments, whatever you would like to call them, they're there and um, I spent about 10 minutes going through my uh, embellishment drawer and I found quite a few. So let's get this last tree on here and then we need to trim this. Um, I suppose it would have been a better idea if I'd put this in a trimmer, but uh, at this point I was too lazy. I didn't want to get up and trim her, so we'll take some scissors to this and it will look just fine. As always, start from the back of the card. Even though there's vellum on this and I can see through the vellum, I still feel more comfortable going from, uh, just cutting from the back of the card. I've ruined far too many cards by trying to guess uh, where my, scissor go my scissors are going. So I'm, I've made this a habit. Okay, we're almost finished with this and it's going to be time for the embellishments. I've sped this portion of the video up kind of boring to watch people put sequins and stars and pearls, all kinds of things on this. Um, I did use Gina K Connect 
glue with this. Um, I found that, especially for this little stuff, it, that works the best. And I did find a new product that I really like, and this is the glitter dot from, they're, they're glitter dots from Elizabeth Craft Design. They're very easy to um, transfer from the sheet to on to your project. All right, our Christmas trees are decorated, and off camera I have made an envelope. Um, sorry about my hat there, I keep forgetting to take it off. Um, I did, like I said, I did make a, an envelope, and instead of putting pearls and, and sequins on there, I just went ahead and used my collection of stickles. I didn't think that the uh, post office people would appreciate my uh, the pearls gumming up their processing machines. Anyway, that is project number one, and we are on to project number two. Project number two is going to be uh, one of those monster gift tags that you see Tim Holtz working with all the time. And right now I'm going through the neon card stock trying to find a good color for a car. Um, I don't remember what colors the cars were back then. Um, yep, there's the, the journaling tag. And the more I look at it, I think that the, the blue would work better. I do have my colored pencil set here. The set I have is Arteza, Arteza. I've heard it pronounced both ways. I'm not sure which is the preferred pronunciation, but um, this is the 72, and for the price point that these pencils are, this is uh, the deal of the century. They perform well, and I have uh, zero complaints about them. I purchased them myself, so this is a uh, non-biased review. But the colors I've chosen here are Robin Egg Blue, uh, Periwinkle, and what was the other one? I can't remember. Um, Peacock Blue. And I'm trying to match the the blue that the bl the neon blue that came in the kit, and I think it's going to be that one. And now I can't remember which one, <laughs> which one it is. As soon as I figure this out, I'll let you know. No, it's not that one. Let's take a look at this one. Anyway, these colors are so easy to use, and they're so creamy. There we go. Okay. So this ended up being Robin Egg Blue. All right. Let's get started. If you've got anybody in your family, uh, child, a grandchild, who is even vaguely interested in art. This is such a good set to get started on. Um, the only recommendation I would have to add to this is a really good pencil sharpener. Off camera, I went ahead and I stamped two cars in my Misty. I always stamp an image twice when I'm either working with Copics or colored pencils. And I also colored it in. I used the Robin Egg Blue, and I also used black for the tires and gray for the windows. Now I'm going to bring this the camera in a little bit, and to me it looks like a second grader colored this car in. And so we're going to uh, remedy that with a product called Gamsol. Uh, I was introduced to this um, with a few art classes that I did take, and Gamsol uh, is a lot of times will be used with oils, but this time we're going to use it with my colored pencils. And what it does is it smooths the color out and it moves it around, and all the uh, pencil lines and strokes will be blended together, and you won't be able to tell whether this is. Copic or watercolor or color pencil or anything like that. So um, it, it just makes it easier on the eye when you're taking a look at this. One bit of advice I do have when you're using Gamsol is that you've got to put down a lot of color. Uh, really work it into the paper because Gamsol, if you don't have enough color, if you don't have enough pigment on there, then 
um, it's just going to soak right into the paper and you will have wasted your time and effort. Um, what I'm using here is a paper stump and you saw me sand it there and that's just to get the current color off there and start again. And I'm going to I'm making these balloon tires. I do vaguely remember that on my dad's car. I want to put some finishing touches on this car. I've got some uh, Nouveau glitter drops and I think this is white blizzard or yeah it's white blizzard and it will just add a little bit more texture and interest to this car. I'm going to put it on the headlights and then I will put it again on the uh, the balloon tires, I think that's what you call them. Um, I don't think they had <laughs> fancy rims that are available today. But anyway, we're going to take this and make them look shiny. I took a look at my uh, Nuvo Drop collection, and the red that I had that I wanted to use on the tail light was just too, it, it, was, it was too harsh, too red. Uh, so we'll have to figure out something to do with that. But right now we need to set this aside and work on our our tag, work on the, the background tag. And <clears throat> I'm using three uh, colors, but yeah, okay, there's the journaling tag again. Sorry guys, I'm getting redundant. Um, I'm using um, black soot and ice spruce and old paper and I'm also going to use the glitter from the kit. The makers of the Distress Oxide inks, uh, Ranger Industries, they have put uh, many positive properties into this product and there was one that I discovered and if they know then just ignore this but if if they don't pay attention. Um, I'm using the microfine glitter that came with the kit and I found out that if I put the glitter on while the ink is still damp, the glitter will stick and you don't need any additional adhesive or anything like that. So um, I very quickly, and not as quickly, quite as quick as, as this, but I very quickly put, uh, laid down a, a very good amount of ink. Uh, right here, we'll finish it up with old paper this is my uh, my newest favorite. I, it's it's been out for a while, but this is the first time I've I've used it, and I'm in love with it. So, anyway, um, I did this as quickly as I could, and I made a avalanche of glitter on this, and without any extra moisture, no water, no no adhesive, no double sided tape, I. I just poured this stuff on here. I didn't burnish it. I just left it the way it fell. And uh, it really made a very, very subtle and very pretty night sky. Well, I don't have it uh, quite in the right angle for the camera, but uh, trust me, the glitter's there and it looks very good. Uh, I decided that it needed a few more uh, stars and uh, I went ahead and I put a little bit of acrylic paint on my acrylic block and we, I just splattered a little bit more, not enough to cover up the, uh, the microfine glitter but just enough to, oh, to make it interesting. and. Um, you know, guys, don't spend a whole lot of money on this. I think this was 50 cents at Michael's. And if you're just going to spray it and splatter it, you, you don't need to worry about how much you spend on it. All right, we're going to let this dry. And the next thing we're going to do is put this, put this together. I went ahead and I did use color pencils on the tree along with more uh, gems and things like that. And I also made a moon. I made a moon out of uh, vellum, the same vellum, vellum that I used for the card. And I was able to hide the adhesive behind all the, uh, the lettering. 
I also put double-sided adhesive on the back side of the car and on the back side of the tree. Uh, double-sided adhesive is a really good product except on really little spaces and so as you'll see here in a minute um, I had to put some uh, liquid liquid adhesive on the trunk and on the uh, tail end of the car, the back quarter panel, whatever you want to call it. I showed this tag to my youngest son who is not at all interested in what I do. But uh, I showed it to him and I said, what kind of present would you attach to this tag? And he said, Mom, there's no question about it. It would be good to uh, attach a set of keys for a brand new car for Christmas. And I thought, yeah, well, that that might do. So anybody who's thinking about uh, giving their teenager or 20-something uh, kids a car, um, I've got the perfect tag. So there we are. And right now we are on to project number three. Okay, project number three. We're going to take inspiration from the cardstock, the neon cardstock that came in the kit. And I've got my uh, watercolor set here and some watercolor paper. As you can see, um, I tried once and it just didn't work. They needed to be a little stronger and I didn't use the right embossing powder. So we're going to try this again. Now this is my go-to watercolor set. I love this. Uh, this is the Kiritake Ganzi Tambi. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And this is uh, just like the uh, colored pencil set. This, these are good uh, starter paints. Um, and uh, their, their price point is I wouldn't call it spot on. It's probably a little bit more expensive, but it's it's worth it. And the pans are uh, pretty good size. Another plus with this kit is that they provide you with a, uh, a color palette. And when I first got it, uh, this is why I put it to good use. I matched up the uh, colors with the numbers. And it helps because you don't have to take a look around for a piece of paper and, and test it out again. And the colors are uh, pretty true to the, uh, to the pans. So I'm going to try and match some of these colors to the cardstock. Ideally, I would take a medicine dropper, eyedropper, whatever you want to call them, um, and I'd put two or three drops in the pan that I wanted to use. And so as you can see here, I uh, I couldn't find my eyedropper, so I had to use my squirt bottle. Uh, but it's it's good to just put a few drops of moisture in there and uh, let the paint soften. So when you're ready to go, or when it's ready to go, you're ready to go. And um, so what I've done is I've taken several images from the kit, and I put a piece of watercolor paper in uh, my Misty. And I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool for this. Uh, on this particular project, I will use the um, the Versamark, but I also have to use some black embossing powder. I do not like to use this. I don't want it in my house. It gets all over the place, and if it gets on the walls, it's tough to get off. And I'll stop complaining about it. Okay. So finally, I can get this in my Misty and get it centered. When you're working with watercolor paper and um, Versamark, you want to make sure that the watercolor paper is firmly secured in your Misty. Uh, since the Versamark ink is difficult to see, you have to make sure that you're not going to get any smudges or anything like that. And I and I will ink this up probably two or three times just to make sure that I've I've got a, a clear image. 
I've already done this project once and um, it's a crime that I've got to do it again but uh, those things happen anyway let's see if I can get enough uh, going here and oh no well <laughs> I may end up doing this for a third time all right uh, let's see where we are with this and I'm going to put that uh, black embossing powder on here and uh, see if I can brush away uh, the Versamark ink that it, that I didn't want. Uh, this is always <laughs> this is always the fun part after you get through and seeing what needs to be left and what needs to be uh, brushed away. And I have a funny feeling that this is not going to be pretty. Yeah, there's a big smudge right in the middle. Oh, nuts. Well, okay. I'm going to try and and resurrect this, and I don't think that uh, it's going to work. Um, yeah, well, shoot. Let's just <laughs> try this again. I'm sorry, guys. All right, like I always say, let me make the mistake so you don't have to. All right, back again, and we will get anti-static powder tool, make sure everything's secure, and ink it up with Versamark ink, and get this done properly this time. Hoping that this will work out, and everybody keep their fingers crossed. Uh, this is not the first time that I've had to redo a project. Um, I'm sure these YouTube videos make it look simple and easy and we never mess up and well that's not true either all right oh finally okay now I'm going to hit this with my heat gun and we can get started with the watercolor uh, the images turned out nicely and they're crisp and it looks like everything's covered I always um, put the the cardstock that has been embossed under the light to make sure everything's shiny and that all the embossing powder has been melted and it will stay where it needs to stay. Okay, let's get out my watercolor and I'm not even going to tape this down. I'm to the point that let's just get this show on the road. Alright, I'm going to take my squirt bottle and wet the paper and I'm not going to saturate it, I'm just going to give it a, a light misting. And now it's time to add some color. I'm working on my glass mat here, and um, thank goodness it the glass mat gives me a place to blend my colors, and it's, on, it's nice and white so you know what it's going to look like when it hits the paper. And as we, as I said before, I did my best to uh, match the the paint to the neon colors uh, I didn't like that one I am by no means a watercolor expert and what I'm going to do I'm just going to put the color on the paper and it's it'll be a little bit like uh, if you've heard of color smushing it's going to look a little bit like that and uh, I, I want the colors to be certainly more bold than they were um, on my first attempt and that one turned out okay I'm all right and there's the blue anytime you're working with watercolor make sure you've got plenty of paper towels and um, extra water this um, th the uh, watercolor is is forgiving, not quite as forgiving as uh, oil painting, but certainly uh, a whole lot more forgiving than acrylic. And I think I'm finally getting this to the point where I'm I'm pleased with the outcome. It's a little bolder than the last time uh, because I think because of the black embossing powder and. Uh, we're going to finish it up and let it dry 
and we'll take a look in just a minute. I prefer to see my water projects, the watercolor projects, um, after they've air dried. I'm not impatient. I'll be very happy when it dries on its own. But the, um, the second project turned out so much better. Um, and I, it, the colors are bolder, and I'm sure that the black embossing powder had something to do with it. So let's take a look. Um, I chose some uh, green cardstock to put on my card base. I thought that was one of the colors that looked the best. And after we get through putting this on the card base, I'm going to put some stars. And I'll show you what I did with the envelope, too. Um, I would like to thank everybody for taking time out of their busy day uh, to view this video. Uh, please give it thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will be back on Wednesday with another Washi Tape Wednesday. And until then, this is Jan Monahan for Wrapping with Jan. Thank you so much for watching.